Uh, okay, guys, in continuation with the uh, application of the friction part, today we will see the friction clutches. Okay, how the friction is used in the clutches. Today is the 18th class of the today we will see the friction clutches. Okay, in that, how the friction is. Used for the in case of clutches, we will see today. This part there are two, two theories in the clutches. Okay, one is uniform pressure theory, and other is uniform wear theory. The both theories we will cover in the today's lecture, and this the same concept also used in the theory of machines. Also, the break uh, the friction in the brakes is very simple. Uh, I think I request you all guys you, you can <coughs> break see in the brakes the, uh, the clutch friction we will take up today okay friction in clutch friction in clutch how this clutch works with the help of this friction this thing will this topic we will take up today and um, I request you, you, you all guys <coughs> you of your own you see how the friction works in the brakes and uh, brakes and rolling friction how this two cater how this works how this machines work uh, machines brake and rolling friction how works on the friction you please study with your own okay because otherwise else the topic will be i need to make, take more classes on it in order to complete the frictions Almost, uh, uh, I think from ladder wage belt friction, I, I already taken a class on that. In the last class, I think uh, on screw jack, I have taken. Okay, and today's class, we will finish this with, with clutches. Okay, and the other two for the other two for machines for brakes, and you will study in the C. In the brakes, there are friction used also braking torque. Okay, there are two types of one is band band brake, and other is shoe brake. In the whatever, whatever in the automobiles in the, in the scooters or in the mo in the motorcycles we are seeing it's a shoe, shoe kind of brake right and other one is band brake band brake is used with the help of belt that thing in the, uh, in that how to take the uh, tangent how to take the um, pre how to make a pre board diagram for that band brake we already saw uh, uh, in the belt friction also i think that thing is easy that's why i skip uh, you skip the part of this break friction in the break part. I will skip this and you study up your own because I, I already taught you the how the belt friction works, right? The same concept is applied in this brakes also. So now I what I will do? I will take up this clutch part and rolling friction. You have to study very properly because in the car, see what is the rolling friction in the car? How the car is moving? Okay, that thing you have to study in the rolling friction. I think it's I will take later once I will complete all static parts and dynamics parts of the question I one more I will video put on the rolling friction okay uh, I suppose that you are taking you are making the you are you are studying on your brakes also <coughs> because that is simple one it is based on the concept of the belt friction what we have discussed previously today will the clutch will do, will, will, will will complete this friction part okay application of the friction part will will complete with concept also what we will explain okay okay now uh, in the clutches we start how the power and torque transmitted with the help of this friction we will see okay uh, with the help of friction we know why uh, this friction what we will do with the help of friction what we will transmit in the power and torque right power and torque is transmitted is transmitted with use of by means of friction by means of by means of friction right that's why this friction is very important see how the beautiful the friction is friction concept is transmitted in the power and the torque right first we will see the definition of the clutch how the how the clutch is defined. 
see uh, we know you know that the clutch we will we will using in our automobiles right uh, if you, you see while driving what we will do we will leave the clutch very slowly because unless, if you if you leave the clutch clutch very speedy then what will happen the vehicle vehicle will suddenly stop and engine will stop working right that's why we have to leave the clutch because they are in on driving on driven shaft with the clutch plate there are many like gearbox many arrangement is there okay this so slow in order to change the velocity ratio of this gear ratio wheel all the things we have to leave the clutch very slowly right <coughs> so that the, the the engagement will be very slowly and the vehicle will go ahead properly or else it will stop suddenly right okay we will see the definition what is the definition of the clutch first this is this is machine clutch is a machine this is a this is machine element this is machine element used to used to transmit the power transmit the power used to transmit transmit the power and torque from one shaft to other, one from one shaft to another, right? See what the clutch will do. Uh, as soon as we press the clutch from the driven uh, driving and driven shaft, it will disengage. Engine engine will not stop, right? Engine will running. If you press the clutch, blood vehicle why vehicle stops. Because once we press the clutch, then there is a disengagement, disengagement between the driving and driven shafts, so the vehicle will stop, right? That is the concept, that is, that is the function of this clutch. Whenever we, the, the engagement and disengagement, it depends on our requirement, right? It's a frequent requirement. Suppose um, there is a rough road, we have to take a break and we need to, uh, need to change the gear, right? That's time we have to press the press the uh, in order to change the gear anyhow we have to press the clutch unless and until it will it uh, there will be sound coming right on the vehicle i think so you you guys maybe face this problem when you, without pressing the clutch when you are trying to change the gear it's it's a rub so it's a very dangerous sound is coming from the engine okay that is very harmful to the engine that's why first you have to disengage the press the clutch and then you have to change the gear okay because once you disengage the disengage once you disengage the uh, the disengage between this driving and driven shaft what the clutch the function of the clutch is to always there is a frequent disengagement between engine driving shaft and this uh, driven shaft okay that is what the doing this means without stopping the engine we will operate the vehicle okay we will, uh, how it's depend on our requirement okay i need a speed that that time i will i will leave the clutch and i will go on the certain speed and after certain times i need to stop the vehicle that time what i will do without stopping the engine what i will do i will press the clutch okay and i will disengage driving shaft and driven shaft with the help of the clutch right and i will move like that right then now we'll see how the friction comes in picture in this engagement and disengagement of these two shafts okay with the help of disc there are two theories first one is uniform pressure theory and other was uniform wear theory these two theories are applied whenever the see whenever the clutch is new then you have to use for you have to use if the clutch is new okay at that time you have to use a uniform pressure wear theory right once the clutch is wear out or the clutch become old that time you have to use uniform wear theory that is pressure into a radius equal to constant this theory you have to use i will explain in dynamically also okay in short i told you everything okay this clutch is a machine element used to transmit the power and torque from one shaft to another 
as per our as per our requirement as per our requirement as per our as per operator's requirement those who are operating as per operator requirement okay okay this is the definition of the clutch okay now we will see how the friction plays a very major role in this clutch okay let's we we'll move ahead i'll schematically show you how the clutch how there is a clutch looks like okay so with the help of the simple disc i will explain you how the clutch looks like see this is a this is yeah i'll draw this uh, figure in this diagram okay this is this is uh, this is a dry this shaft is directly connected to the engine okay engine connected and this is driven by engine okay this is what the shaft and this is on this plate there are uh, the friction lining is there okay like how the brake shoe lining are there that like that there is a friction lining okay and in front of this uh, okay this this lining may be directly on the flywheel also they are connected on this is called hot pressure pressure lining and this uh, another plate which we with with the help of operating c on this plate this is a driven shaft this is driving shaft by engine this is a driver driver shaft and this is driven shaft okay driven shaft uh, on the driven shaft uh, the, on the driving shaft here is the lining of the clutches and here is also the lining of the clutches okay and on this shaft the uh, uh, this uh, on this there are spring is mounted and this is the stopper for the for that spring okay uh, this is uh, this is this is pressure plate and this is friction plate okay friction plate see ultimately this this the connection of this is on directly or on the pedal where we are operating right the person who are sitting and operating uh, like this as as soon as you pressing the pedal this will move in this direction this will move in this direction okay and this will take in this direction how the disengagement and disengagements of that uh, driver person is doing this i shown you this okay i'll wash out this okay now now see this is what the general schematic diagram shows how the clutch works if anyone is pressing the pedal then this will pressing the pedal then it will move in this direction when it leaves the pedal then it will move in this direction and there is engagement the engagement and disengagement using this pedal he is do, driver is doing okay i think you guide uh, you, you guide know how the operation of the clutch works this kind this is these are these are the friction lining friction lining okay these are the friction linings now we will derive the expressions for this okay First, there are two theories while well, deriving clutch. First one is in clutch, there is a uniform uniform pressure theory. When the vehicle is new, at that time we are applying this theory, okay? Because there is no wear. And second, once the vehicle becomes old, then uniform wear theory we are applying. Uniform wear theory. Okay? We will see that the derivations for the uniform pressure theory as well as uniform wear theory now. First, now, now, <coughs> Now, in the derivation part, I will rub this in the derivation part. I think you guys take a snapshot of this and you can make your own notes. In the derivation, we will start from the this disc. What we the schema diagram shows, okay? This, suppose this is a disc, disc of the clutch, okay? This looks like this, okay? 
what I will do first, I will consider small element on this. Okay, this is what the small element at a distance r. Okay, uh, of, of this dr, I will consider. Okay, and here, see, here pressure is coming on this side, right? And perpendicular this radius r and this pressure, there is one more component is like this, which is called friction, right? Friction this. Because of this normal ray, because of this pressure, this normal comes, and non because of this normal, there is a friction, and you, with the help of this, the torque is getting to in order to rotate the shaft, rotate the shaft. Okay, that is what the principle behind how to this connects. Because of this pressure, this normal reaction comes. Okay, with the help of this friction, because of this friction force, there is a torque on this disc, and the uh, the shaft will start to rotate on which this disc is mounted. Okay. Okay, this the value of this df is as we are considering this. This is a very small strip, right? This is for the analysis purpose. We are considering this flaws as the, the, the as the r varies, right? That's why we consider this small. The n also varies. That's why this comes mu dn. Okay, this is a and this comes. This pressure is w into how much area this is acting. That is what da da is the area acting. I think no need to explain these things. You guys might have learned this in the previous classes also. The same things, okay? Okay, and then I'll just I'll move ahead. Okay, see now I will start up with the derivation part of this. Okay. And first we will see this. This is also this is also df. Okay, this is a small because this friction is on small strip element which you have done. That's why df is in u dn. Okay. The next once this df equal to mu dn, the next we know this dn is equal to dw, right? This is this p into da is w, and no, because pressure, right? Pressure into area, that is what is the force, okay? This mu into da is this is dw, okay? And this dw is equal to dn, right? Means this mu equal to this mu w is equal to this dn is equal to dw, dw is equal to p into da, right? This is what the df we got. Then next, this is mu p, what is the da? We know how much da is here, da equal to 2 pi r into dr right i will write down this da 2 pi r i will substitute over here 2 pi r into dr okay in this expression this df i got okay what i will do now i have a small friction on this element which we have considered what we got right now right <coughs> this is the this is the fourth this is for x no this is i think uh, okay okay this expression we got right now First, what the next step? What we will do? We have to find the axial load, right? Because of this df, how much the axial load is coming? This thing we have to find out, right? I will draw this. First thing is axial load. Axial load on shaft, right? Axial load we need to calculate. In order to calculate the axial load, <coughs> first we have to take a dw. This is what a uh, p into d. A equal to pressure into this is what the axial load, right? This is dw and this dw is p into da. Okay. Now uh, substitute the what is the value of this? This is p into 2 pi r into dr, right? In order to take this is what for the uh, this is the axial load on the axial load in this direction on this small element. In order to calculate for complete what we will do w equal to we have to integrate this equation from from this radius from uh, radius r r inner r inner to r outer okay r this is r inner suppose suppose uh, in the previous diagram i already shown the disc is showing like this right the lining of the frictions are here on on this this there is a lining and on this this is the axis of the shop this is yeah, in R radius inner and this is R outer, right? R O. Now I what I will do? P into two pi 
into R. I will integrate this from R outer to R inner, right? Then into dr. Okay, W. I will take out as a. This is a. Uh, I will. Okay, this is one for. In in the two theories, we will use this. If the pressure is constant, uniform pressure variance theory is constant, then we will take P outside. And for uniform wear theory, P into R, this product is constant in uniform wear theory. That time I will take. First, what I will do? I will I will bracket this. This is very important. And in the, in the cases, this load, uh, this this expression we are using while the deriving that cases. Individual, okay. Please write down this. Now, once once we find this axial load, the next is torque transmitted, right? Torque. How much torque is transmitted? Torque transmitted. Transmitted. We will see expression for this also. Okay. Torque transmitted. See the torque transmitted is dt is equal dt is equal to dt is equal to df into r. Right. How the torque is coming on this disc because of this frictional force. Right. That is our aim. To study this clutch class with the help of friction, right? The torque we are getting this torque, okay? Then I will further simplify this df is equal to mu dn into r, right? Later, I will introduce what is the dn also. Mu dn is how much dn is dn is p into da p into this da da is 2 pi r into dr okay and into again one one more r is there okay it means dt comes dt uh, the entire torque is going to i will integrate this integrate from r i to r o this is also r i to r o Okay, this is mu p to pi r square into dr. Okay, this is what the torque is getting. Okay, we will use this two expression in uniform wear theory. Yeah, uh, in both the theories, in the next step, what we are doing in this, we use this load axial load and this torque we will use in the next theory. Okay, okay, now we will consider. To, uh, I will draw this. I, I think I uh, this diagram is not needed right now. Okay. This W I in the see my, my my motto is to understand this why I shown in 3D. See the load is acting in that in this direction, right? Suppose so one smooth thing I will explain why I done why I shown you this in 3D. Uh, this is actually see this is one direction. This is suppose X in X direction the axial load is applied in Y direction. This is the Y direction. Okay. There is no load in y direction, but in other z direction, this is a perpendicular axis, right? On this perpendicular axis, uh, this is a tangential load acting to the axis, right? Because of this, the torque comes, and because of this, the axial load comes, right? It's a dw. Because of the pressure, the axial load is coming. Once the axial load comes, then torque will come in picture. How the torque will come? Because of this frictional force. Okay. Okay, I will draw this now. And we'll we'll go uh, case one. Uh, uh, we'll we'll go for there are two uniform. One is in clutch. There are two theories. Two theories in clutch. Two theories. First one is uniform pressure theory, and second one is uniform wear theory. Okay. In the, in the both in the first what we will do in the uniform pressure theory. Whatever the whatever we are given this equation in this equations we what do we in you know, order to find this W what we will do we will take out common this P right because this comes from integration because this is uniform pressure wear theory right okay in uniform pressure theory UPT uniform pressure theory as P is equal to constant 
as P is constant. See, this is for new vehicle. New vehicle, the pressure is constant, okay? Because the clutches are new, the lining, there will not be any wear on the lining. But as, as long as there is a continuous use of the vehicle, that case, what will happen? There is a wear of the clutches because it's a, the wear is it's like anything but we we assume the wear is like like this see this is hot lining okay new clutch is like this but the tangential velocity is maximum over here on the periphery that's why there is more wear and the wear goes down like this okay i think you guys understood this why you are using this theory and this theory for new clutch we are using uniform pressure theory and for old clutches we are using uniform wear theory Okay, in this case, we'll first we'll find this axial load. Okay, this UPT. First thing we have to find axial load. Axial load. General formula we already derived here. In here, what we have to do? We need to take just the pressure outside, and then I will integrate. Okay. W is equal to the integration. I'll take P outside, right? It's R0. I'll take P as well as 2 phi is also constant. I'll take 2 phi, 2 phi P integration from R, R inner to R outer. Okay, this is R inner to R outer because friction lining. Um, see, in some class discuss there are friction line is also completely also, but in the center there is tangential velocity is very less, right? That's why in the center part they are like coring they have done. Why it, that center part is not providing the torque, right? That's why uh, like this lining on the clutches are doing. I think you guys understood this, okay? Then what next? It is R into dr, okay? It is 2 pi p. I'll once I integrate this, this comes R square divided by 2. Integrate integrate from R zero limits. I will down. I will write down the limits of the integration from R i to R o. Okay. Okay. Then next step is two pi p. This is R. This two and this two get cancelled. Right. I will write down it directly. R o R zero square minus R i R outer minus R inner square. Okay. This is what the p in the axial case axial load case. Of uniform pressure theory we got right here we'll dry, we got load axial load if we have to find out the pressure then I will take the pressure P is equal to W divided by 2 pi R O square minus R outer minus R inner square okay this is what the formula for pressure in uniform pressure theory case okay now we done up, done with this axial load. Now we'll go for the torque. The same case. How much torque is transmitted in uniform pressure theory? Okay, this these two we are seeing right now. First part is over, and second now. Now the same formula we'll put here. What is torque equal to? R i R o R outer nu p two pi R square into d r. Okay. You, you, I request you guys please integrate this and tell me the value of the torque. Once you integrate, then you will get a value of the torque, right? I think this value is coming to uh, RQ divided by 3, right? Like this. And 2 by 3, the answer will come in terms of 2 by 3. Request you guys please do your own. Because once with the, with this FSU lower, then we, we need to play uniform wear theory also. Because in see in the exam both theories you ask for. Whether you have to go for uniform pressure and uniform wear, they will tell us in the question itself. Once they mention, then we'll use the, this formula according to that. That's why first you need to how the how these two formulas coming. This is very important. These two formulas are you know, on axial load, other is torque. Okay, first the axial load is comes. Uh, this see in this formula you can imagine the how the actual actual clutch is working right see first time what i have to do in apply once i left leave the clutch then the axial load comes in picture right that is what the w 
and after once the axial load comes on the pressure it will apply the pressure this p amount of pressure once this p is applied on that then the friction comes to uh, friction will plays the role very important role that is what the, the torque is given and the uh, driven shaft with the help of this driven shaft driving shaft will drive uh, dri, dri, driven shaft will drive by driving shaft okay I think it's in a very simple manner. I'll try to explain you. Okay. See, I will write down directly. It comes integration comes two by three, two by three pi mu. P. This is the pressure P. What we will already remove from this. Okay. Once we uh, remove this pressure P, coming this pressure is this one. Okay. And R. I will just draw this now. Huh? As I have to use this this torque, I will write this torque. Okay. And this one is. I think this is total torque. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can use this pressure. Also, okay. This torque. Transmitter I will, as I rub, I can return over there. Okay, uh, two by three mu mu p. Okay, coefficient of pressure mu p. Uh, what remains right now? It's r it's r cube right? R o cube minus r inner cube right? This is what the total transmission. Now what we will do? This p this will put over. Uh, will will this expression will the value of the p will enter in this okay equation what will i will get us mu p is w divided by r o square minus r i r inner square here the numerator term is cubic of radius right this is what the numerator term is okay okay we can we can i think we can further simplify this also I think no need to uh, simplify this. The square will not come here. The square is directly R square. Okay. Okay. Once we further simplify this, we will get torque equal to. I will write down torque like this because there will be confusion, tension, and torque. That's why I will write down torque like this. Mu the mu W into two by three into this radius. Okay. R cube minus R I cube divided by R O square minus R square. Okay, with the help of these two formulas, this axial load and this the main is this one. Okay, this is then this is just application. You need to take a pressure constant. Okay, in the next now with this we come to end with this uniform pressure wear theory of the plates. Okay, we will now see. How the uniform wear theory works? Okay. 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 I'll drop this. And I request I one I will I'll explain this uniform wear theory. I request you you guys to take your questions on the, from the uh, books and you will try to solve with the help of these equations what we derived right now here. Okay. Because now we'll complete this theory right. Because um, my in this lecture my my main my main my my main focus is on to you to understand this uh, basic concept behind the clutch. Okay, I think you guys can remember this all things. Okay, the way I told you. Okay, now I will start with this uniform wear theory. Okay, in uniform wear theory you keep in mind always pressure into this product. I will keep in constant. Okay, once with this p into r will get constant then see in the equations the pi into r is coming this is directly goes to constant right see i'll write down the equation for this right now for this first you know first for axial load axial load you make the notes for likes what the way i am doing on the note on this board right because uh, this will help us to under to keep in mind you will not forget this okay and this is Torque transmitted, okay, okay. Torque transmitted. We need to find out in case of clutch, one is axial load, other is torque transmitted, right? Transmitted. 
okay see the w this equation what tells w equal to we know this equation it is a general equation which we did there are previously and this general equation we are putting this in uniform pressure wear theory in uniform wear theory okay that thing we are doing here first one is it's from inner radius to outer radius then p it's 2 pi r dr right then next Next, uh, next step in the, in the uniform wear theory, what we are assuming that phi pressure into R is equal to constant. Uh, so I will take this outside. This constant I will indicate this as C, okay? For pressure and R. Then 2 pi C it comes. Then dr, di, R inner, R outer, okay? I will integrate this 2 pi C. Oh, what the integration comes is r i my r r r outer minus r inner that is what this w comes okay from this we can also find the value of this c c equal to w divided by 2 pi r outer minus r inner okay i think this is so much simple okay i you done with this thing okay you accelerate how see how the simple is uniform pressure in uniform pressure. first you should keep this mind these two formulas and how this formulas comes with the help of the disk i already discussed you okay uh, you you see it is very difficult to you to keep in mind how this is coming but with the help of that formula with the disk we, we start to imagine how the forces are coming on that and how the axial load uh, raised to normal reaction and normal reaction raised to the friction and starts torque is coming that thing you need to keep in mind so that you will not miss this anything okay these formulas are looking like so big but this is are so simple formulas okay Okay, now now start. Please do yourself how to see the same torque formula. I will put your here, right? Torque equal to what is the formula? Is that this is integration of R inner radius, outer radius? Okay, it's coefficient of friction mu 2 pi R square dr. In this, what I will do, I will take one R outside. Okay, see how mu. P R N you call it that is C and this is 2 is there 2 mu C R inner R outer okay what I'll just write down it very clearly so that you guys can understand this 2 coefficient of friction this constant E into R this is P into R constant and 1 R is remaining inside this okay now I'll integrate this see see the see here in the axial load case we have found out what is the constant this the same thing we we, we have to put in this expression and we will write down the final expression for the torque okay uh, this is r square this is r r square by 2 right and this is limit from outer to inner that is all the limit from inner to outer radius okay see now the next step is i'll cancel out this two and this two okay what remains it's mu c and this r outer square minus r inner square right this is what the torque we get okay I think one term is missing, yes, yes, this pi is missing over here, okay, pi, this pi is comes as constant also, this is what the torque, okay, now, now the next step is you, you just put this C value in this, okay, then you get a final expression, torque is equal to mu, this will be in terms of mu, divided by 2 pi, pi pi and get will cancel over mu r0, not r0, it's r outer in radius, minus inner radius and the numerator 
our outer radius minus our inner radius square okay okay i'll drop this we have done with this clutch part and this is the what the expressions we seen in this lecture that is very main that from that only questions major questions are asked from that okay i request you guys please practice the questions on based on this i will not take any questions okay like since like uh, like how i have done in the last all classes because uh, i need to i need to clear your concepts very properly while solving how the process is solving look going for first going for free dot body diagram then going for clear equations right okay okay i one more i one more time i will write down this okay so that you can remember this torque is equal to if i expand this torque equal to c this is mu w divided by 2 to uh, 2 is there right here is 2 is there and 2 pi is also pi i think pi we have cancelled pi right mu is 2 pi and what is this uh, yeah this uh, if i expand this then it comes r outer minus r and outer minus r inner and r outer minus r inner right and one more term is given r outer minus radius inner minus radius outer this this get cancelled then what the expression will come pi is again i am missed a pi over here how oh. No, here pi will not come. I am not missing. Pi will not come over here. How come? Because the once we kept the this value c from this this pi and this pi get cancelled. Okay, in the torque final torque equation, there will, it will not depend upon that constant, right? <laughs> pi. Okay, the final formula is torque equal to mu times w r radius outer plus radius. In a divided by two. This is what the mean radius, equivalent radius, and this is the final torque formula for uniform wear theory. See, you don't remember the formula directly like this. First, you remember what I had told you previously. This axial load and how that axial load is coming, and that how the torque is transmitted. Okay, with the help of that only you can remember this formula. You okay? You can do the practice, but you don't remember the formula directly. Okay. it will not be remembered but you understand the process the derivation how it's coming in the both cases in uniform pressure wear theory and uniform wear theory okay and it you too much all all the things whatever i have this theory is explained here the same thing is in machine design in clutch also okay the same thing they will repeat also i means you are getting the benefits in from this subject in machine design also the same theory is there how will see the how easy will you go while you are studying machine design because this few concepts are you clearing in this concept right i think guys we will cover uh, uh, yet 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 as of now there are <coughs> there are few concepts regarding this clutches but i think you no need to study you can go your own study also you do that but the main part which i need to cover that i have covered here the derivation part the definition of the clutch right and the function of the clutch how it works i already explain you the practical example of the clutches in the automobiles how it works right all the things i have explained you in the student lecture with this lecture we will end the friction part in the 18th lecture we are ending the friction part of the clutch so what what up till now we have studied in the engineering mechanics <coughs> are black broadly classified into two categories one is statics and other is dynamics in static case uh, what we are studying is now in static right we are in static we are not at moved in dynamic dynamic study right we are in static in static first we done the basic concepts then go for equilibrium equations then we studied the friction part up till now okay then in from tomorrow onwards I request you guys. One of the topic is remaining of the break and 
rolling friction you see your own brake is similar to that of the belt friction because in the you know i already discussed about this okay you you study of your own of that two topics of the brakes which are remaining okay you can watch the lectures on youtube or you can see um, uh, in any you can read any books you can understood that concept okay yeah guys with this we will end the friction part and from the next onward parts we will start from process okay thank you bye take care see you